Ave Maria, greetings from the Tower of Lepanto. This is Father Angelo for Standing Fast, a weekly commentary on, public, on Catholic life in the public square. I'm back for, from, a, from a hiatus. I've been busy with uh, Mary Victrix and the Knights of Lepanto, the encampment, the fall encampment we had with the fathers and sons and the boot camp with Doug Barry. Also, I've been involved uh, commenting on Air Maria uh, concerning the uh, state legislature of Connecticut forcing the Catholic hospitals to administer Plan B. Recently on Mary Victrix, I was commenting on uh, a new development concerning the Knights Templar. Apparently, the Vatican Archives is releasing a book on a document called the Shinon Parchment, which is uh, the absolution of the Knights Templar from all the accusations that were made against them by uh, Clement V, who was also the one who eventually, in spite of absolving them, uh, suppressed them. And uh, there are a number of Knights, modern Knights Templar groups who are claiming that this is an, uh, a vindication of their own tradition and their own group. Some of them claim that uh, they are direct descendants of the Knights Templar. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not going to try to sort out all those controversies, but clearly there's no historical basis for anybody today claiming that they are the legitimate descendants of the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar were a, a Catholic military order uh, that gained its jurisdiction and existence from the Roman Catholic Church. And when the Roman Catholic Church suppressed them, rightly or wrongly, they ceased uh, to exist. <clears throat> and apparently the Church has uh, determined, and many scholars for many, many years have agreed with this, that they did get, certain, to a certain degree, the raw, a raw deal. Uh, and that uh, Philip II and uh, the political concerns of his kingdom were, were motives for him having pressured uh, Clement V to su suppress uh, the Knights Templar. In any case, uh, a lot of what goes on under the title of Knights Templar today are, are just uh, fantasies, including you know the Da Vinci Code fantasy that the Knights Templar found the body of St. Mary Magdalene, and that was the real Holy Grail that they protected, and they, they, and they created this uh, this other secret society called the Priory of Zion to protect the secret. And even if one doesn't hold those particular ideas of Dan Brown, there are many other conspiracy theories surrounding the Knights Templar. And it's generally, as I say, baloney. But it's it's fun. You know, people love a conspir conspiracy theories and idea the idea that the Knights Templar go back to the very beginning of the crusading period as guardians of secret uh, uh, mysteries and ancient mysteries is, you know, fun to think about. But uh, as long as people think it's just fun and don't take it seriously, I suppose some of it is not too dangerous. But much of it, uh, of course, is because it's connected with a lot of neo-pagan uh, uh, ideas and and spirituality. Uh, so I've made a point on Mary Victrix of writing a little article called uh, "In Praise of the Newer Knighthood" uh, to remember the virtues of the Knights Templar rather than their vices. And the point here is that uh, in, in the, at the time when the Knights Templar were founded, uh, St. Bernard of Clairvaux was asked by the founder of the Knights Templar to write a little exhortation to the Knights. And he called it, he did, and he called it in praise of the new knighthood. And he noted that this knighthood was both spiritual and temporal and that these knights were both men of prayer and men of action. They weren't just monks who were exclusively dedicated to the life of prayer, and they weren't just knights who were exclusively dedicated to temporal concerns. Uh, they were both, first of all, men of prayer, and then men of action. And their duty and uh, privilege was to serve the needs of the weak, and the poor, and the defenseless, and to serve the interests of the faith, the Roman Catholic faith. And St. Bernard told them, St. Bernard told them that uh, if they were given the privilege of dying for the faith, that would be martyrdom. And uh, if they were victorious, that would be victory. But either way, they would be vic victorious. And, uh, and the best thing of all would be that they would have the opportunity to give their lives uh, for the faith. And uh, while many of the Templars, per perhaps most of the Templars, uh, uh, did not reach that ideal. Certainly, most of them were not saints. Uh, that ideal was something 
that was worth uh, uh, cultivating and it's something worth preserving and even perfecting. And that's why I wrote that little article in praise not of a new knighthood but of a newer knighthood because sometimes or perhaps most often in the Middle Ages where the ideals of chivalry were uh, uh, fidelity, honesty, courtesy, prowess, and generosity. Sometimes prowess uh, was the thing that was most developed, you know, the physical aspect of knighthood. And very often the knights fell into vices because, you know, as we know, uh, masculinity and power without a, a deep life of prayer can be turned uh, into selfish ends. And the things that suffered most often were things like uh, honesty and, and, and courtesy. You know, ultimately, chivalry was about protecting those who needed to be protected, not, not about being self-serving. And, and the things that are criticized most about masculinity, about fatherhood, about patriarchy, is that it's power gone astray. Uh, and men are powerful, and they do have the, uh, the duty and the dignity and the office to be heads of the family but they need to serve the interests of their family and perhaps become, certainly become to some extent a victim for the good, for the common good and for their families and perhaps quite literally, as Christ did for us by defending us on the cross. So that's why we, we can consider the Knights Templar and consider their virtues, consider at least the ideals of, of their way of life, which is both uh, a, a spirit of prayer and action and a spirit of, of defending uh, the interior life before anything else and then because of a, 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 an intense life of prayer, because of an intense interior, interior life, defending also uh, the public good and doing it out of love for God and out of um, uh, dedication to the service of the poor, to the corporal works, corporal and spiritual works of mercy. Uh, St. Francis, who wanted to be a knight, uh, for, for a time was enchanted by the idea of becoming a noble, being ennobled. And he was, to a certain extent, uh, a vain, vain before his conversion. Afterwards, he didn't lose the ideals of, of chivalry. Uh, but instead of looking toward his own ennoblement, he looked towards the defense, you might say, of the poor and the needy. He translated uh, uh, his chivalrous ideals into the into the highest standard of courtesy and, and generosity and that's why he he uh, he placed himself at the service of the church so I encourage uh, men who are watching to consider these things and to aspire to the to to a newer form of knighthood uh, which remembers that before anything else a knight is called to place himself at the service of others until next time, this is Father Angelo with Standing Fast. God bless you and Ave Maria.